Hi, this is Guy Wallace. I just wanted to make a comment about the uh, move from various names, instructional design, instructional systems design, to learning experience designer. Um, I, I have mixed feelings about this, as I said, because one, I think it's very necessary, and two, it's sadly necessary because too often in my 40 years plus experience in the instructional design world, um, most instructional designers, instructional systems designers, learning designers, you know, the training designers, too often didn't focus on tasks leading to outputs that met stakeholder requirements. Too often content was generated around topics, topics with face validity but they never went the final mile, that last mile, so to speak, to performance application. Authentic performance required back on the job. And so it's a necessary thing to perhaps change the language to make a big deal out of it. For those people who came into the business during the heyday of e-learning, whether that was static e-learning at the very beginning or more interactive e-learning, um, that's going on to this very day, but too often the content didn't focus on performance, wasn't authentic, didn't help with transfer and then impact back on the job. So it's necessary that we make a big deal out of the need to create learning experiences and hopefully those learning experiences are thought of and desired to be authentic performance tasks leading to outputs, just like required back on the job. And topics may be necessary to help make sense of the tasks and um, less so the behavioral tasks, the overt, you know, observable tasks, but to understand the cognitive tasks, the thinking tasks, the, the decisions, the discriminations, et cetera, that are required uh, in the workflow the tasks leading to outputs. Um, so learning experience design and learning experience designers, it, it's not a new thing. It was around when I first entered the business, but I would say that uh, in certain quarters, and, that mean, and that's actually less than a quarter of the population of instructional designers or whatever we call themselves back then. I was a program developer when I started in 1979. Uh, and then became a training project supervisor uh, 18 months later. Um, but too few people focused on tasks. Now, sometimes that's driven by management. Sometimes it's driven by our clients, sometimes our own uh, training and development L&D uh, leadership that wanted to broaden the appeal for certain content courses, um, and make sure that you know that that it was uh, applicable to all, uh, applicable to many, and that often required watering down the specifics, making it less authentic to everyone. Um, so it certainly had wider appeal, but it certainly then had less impact back on the job. We were asking people to do uh, not just near transfer but far transfer. Take this topic or set of topics and you figure out how to apply this in the job with no corrective or reinforcing feedback. And that's uh, bad on us, an indictment of our own approach to developing um, learning, training, instruction. I prefer the term instruction, which I think is inclusive of both job aids, also known as guidance before it was job aids, electronic performance support systems after that, uh, quick reference guides, performance support, sometimes it's known as workflow learning. Um, but the point of all of this is to understand the authentic performance requirements back on the job for the learners, the target audience, and make sure that we are preparing them to go back there at the ready, at some level up the learning curve, up the performance curve, so that they can start to perform and continue to learn on the job through experiences. Now there's some jobs 
where they really need to be master performers almost when they get out to the job and take the wheel, so to speak. If they're taking the wheel of a, of a passenger airline and there's life and death situation, they need to be very good, darn good at what they do. If they're taking the controls of a nuclear power plant, they need to be darn good. Just as we might think of the needs for performance competence for our own kids when they become of age and get their driver's license and start taking a car out on the road. We want them to have enough experience to keep themselves and others safe. And so that's what we really are trying to do. We know that they're gonna learn through additional practice with feedback, you know, getting traffic tickets, uh, having minor fender benders, hopefully no serious accidents, but that's all part of the learning experience. What we're trying to do is get them at the ready so that they can minimize or eliminate those kinds of issues going forward. And that's what our training, instruction, learning, learning experiences should be all about. Thank you.